Quill teetotal and howdy howdy do everybody. It's your pal Sig Neutron, and I'm back with episode two of Sig Neutron Sputron. Holy smokes, boy. Um yeah, I've kinda went off the radar for a little bit because I've I've been getting getting my life in order, man. Uh, <laughs> boy, if I like where do I even begin with the things that have happened since I've done the last recording of this podcast it feels like i've lived like several lifetimes since then uh all amazing and wonderful stuff ups and downs highs and lows like a beautiful symphony um so but now i here we are and i'm inspired to try to impart the knowledge that i've learned and the knowledge that i continue to learn uh from well all right, so I'm just going to come out and say it. So uh, polytheism is is the way to go, man. It's gods, deities, aliens, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're real, and uh, I, I 100% believe it. And I've been learning from them, and it's been changing my life. And again, nothing that I'm going to say in this podcast is a definite. So all of these are maybes and theoreticals, but... It's just what I'm, because they they don't give us all the answers, because why would they? That would be super boring, and I think part of living life is learning and figuring it all out, but it's inspired me to start my own movement called Reverentism. I call it a practical religion, because for the longest time, I was spiritual. Like, I mean, well, no, I wasn't spiritual. I believed in something else, like an afterlife or something but none of the religions spoke to me because i always said if there was a word of god it has been tainted by man through many many years of being retold and infused with the folly of man which there's plenty of that and how it's like a big historical game of telephone but i believe that man has given been given all of the pieces to the puzzle but the thing is is nobody has put the puzzle together yet. Today, we still think of religion as like, no one's, no one's updating the way that they worship the gods. They're, they're just thinking about all the old ways and you know, gods change with the times too, but religion has just stayed the same. So the things that I'm learning is that it's literally like, I've, I'm just developing a practical religion. You like, even if you don't believe in the spiritual side of it, you can still uh, imply all of the, or like, you can still use all of the practical aspects of what I'm, of irreverentism uh, practically in your life. And you, and you know, even if you don't believe in the spirits, either way, it, it can change your life. And uh, so let's see if I can sort of put into words what I've been learning and what's changed my life. So let's see if I can convince you that what I believe is true. The only thing I know for a fact is that if you're listening to this podcast, then there is a definite reason for it. So listen to what I say, and if something resonates with you, run with it. And if it doesn't, don't. I don't know. Stop listening or something. Or fuck off. Nah, just kidding. Or, or am I? I don't know. Anyways... Welcome to Sig Neutron's Spewtron, episode two, Irreverentism. Hello, 8-Bit Breakdown. Hello, 8-Bit Breakdown. 
Leave a lot of lonely motherfuckers. Whew. Okay, so like I said, let me preface and reiterate that everything I say here in this podcast and about irreverentism, about gods, aliens, other dimensional beings, all of it is are my own theories, and I don't know if any of it's true. Uh, I'm piecing together things that I've learned from the deities, uh, also with a lot of my own inference. So they, it's crazy. The lessons I've learned are so like roundabout, and it's like the gods teach you things like straight up, like some karate kid, like wax on, wax off shit. Like it's, I'll be doing something, and then uh, like by the end of the, day, it'll be like, what? Why did I spend my whole day doing this? And by the end of the day, it's like, holy shit, that's why. Holy fucking shit, they were teaching me something this entire time. But like I said, this is all my take on it. This is what I think, and what I want to do. And this episode is going to be like a brief overview because there are many many layers to whatever this is it's big it's huge man i and it's all connected everything is connected so i'm trying to make sense of it and what i want to do is i want to work with you guys to making sense of it too because religion shouldn't just this is this is a religious movement that is growing and it starts with me but it's actually all of you because the religion isn't just one person so i want to develop this with your stories and your guys input and i'm going to start a reddit uh, subreddit or whatever you call those. I don't even know how to use Reddit, but I'm going to figure it out. And I would love to discuss these episodes with you guys and your own personal experiences and thoughts on this, because if there's one thing I love to do, it's to theorize, for I am a man of theories. Call me Theorus. Theorus Expeditus. Or, uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. See, that's the thing. Where do our thoughts come from? Let's get into it. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin. I guess we'll start right there because that's where I was about thoughts and where they come from. Have you ever wondered? Okay, so there's a voice inside of your head. You're trying to figure out what, how to proceed in a certain situation. And you talk out your problem with yourself in your head. How does that happen? How can one talk out a problem with oneself? Because for one to talk out a problem with oneself, one, one would have to be talking and one would have to be listening. It's like literally impossible to talk with yourself. So what are those voices in your head? What's your conscience? Well, I believe that it's just uh, the way I can make sense of it, man. It's just that old classic devil and angel on your shoulder. And as a, the more I'm learning, I'm starting to think that good and evil is, is it's more gray than that. Uh, there is definite evil that exists, but what you would consider an angel and a demon, actually, they both have very important jobs. So if you have an important job and you're an important part of the ecosystem, are you evil? No, you're just doing your job. So in a brief overview, I believe that we reincarnate in an in infinite, infinite amount of times. And I think that it's so tough, man. There's just, I've learned so much. And so subsequent episodes, we're going to break all this down. But I'm just trying to give you a brief overview of what I think existence is. And it's, I keep going on different tangents, so it's not that brief. But I was just trying to uh, sum it up in a concise form, and then we'll break it down more in depth. I think we reincarnate infinite times, and when we're on the spirits... So I read this book, The Compta Primer. I've been doing a lot of reading. Uh, they've been guiding us to certain books and things like that, and I've learned so much. So The Compta Primer, basically our principles... Well, let me, let me back up here, getting ahead of myself. I believe that all of the main religions in the world, both forgotten and still practiced, I think everybody's right and everybody's wrong. There's is a great 
duality to everything and and existence in itself is contradictory and absurd that's why i call it a reverentism because everybody's right and everybody's wrong and we're just a giant contradiction but i believe that if you combine all of the religions into something that makes sense we'll find the answer of why we're here and i believe that we reincarnate infinite amount of times and each time well so when we're on the spirit plane i believe that we we uh remember all of our past lives so we remember everything but then i think that we kind of work with deities and energies on the other side to come up with maybe a life plan or something uh and then when we reincarnate again we forget all of that so we have to start over and we have to relearn things and figure out why we're here so since essentially we have to learn why we're here remember life is just a great attempt at remembering why the fuck we're here and there are in in researching like so we're going to cover different cultures too in this so for instance i think that you don't have to reincarnate if you don't want to uh because there are spirits that like the gay day uh there it's like a voodoo type spirit well in in voodoo theology there are spirits that just love partying they they like being spirits they they are they're attracted to parties and the energies and it's like they you know when you're drinking too much drinking spirits why why do you get all weird and like why do your friends say things that they would never ever say uh it's because like when we drink and we imbibe substances it lowers our inhibitions but also it lowers our ability to reflect or deflect certain spiritual energies and then they can kind of take control of us a little bit and the more inebriated we get the more control they have that's why your best friend like can turn into a completely different person because they got all kinds of different energies basically playing them like a, a video game or something and i'm going to use a lot of analogies like video games and uh things like that because we're humans and we have to define things because that's the only way we can understand them so a lot of this i'm going to use like pop culture references and things like that but it's the only way i can make sense of it so hopefully it helps you make sense of it too but so looking at that the gay day they like to stay spirits because that's they like that because they and the gay day, they're so funny too they I, I i really love them they are like just party spirits and they're so crass like they can't they 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 don't have to be politically correct because they're they're dead they're not they're not bound by the laws of man <laughs> because they're not in the physical plane so look up the gay day you can spell g h e d e or some people spell it g u e d e uh look them up it, they're great they uh they wear top hats and tail coats and a cane they also wear sunglasses to protect their eyes from the light man so we're getting on tangent there so i think that if we're if you're listening to this with your physical man ears or woman ears or anyone in between ears uh that you chose to come back everybody's always like why me why my life oh no it, everything sucks but you've forgotten that you chose to come back and if you look at life like that it kind of makes it a lot easier to handle because it's a little bit inspiring right it's like oh I was dead, but there was something on this plane of existence here that I could learn or that I could better my overall soul or spirit or something. So, something in me wanted to come back even though I had a choice not to. So, and I believe we're all born with a certain set of circumstances in our life. Like that is 100% fact. Everybody's born in a upper class family, a middle class family, maybe no family at all. But those circumstances are uniquely yours and therein those circumstances lies your why your great question question of why 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 am i here well the answer can be found in your life circumstances it's there because that's why you were born into those circumstances to learn that lesson or many lessons life is many many lessons so if you look at it that way it makes i don't know so we a lot of times humans they life seems unbearable to us 
But really, it's the greatest gift like that you could ever imagine. I mean, can you imagine the alternative just not existing? Like, that's that sounds terrible to me. Existence is awesome and awful, but even experiencing the awful parts is actually pretty awesome because you're a thing that can experience those things. So jumping topics all over here. Yeah, this is why it's Sputron. And yep, I'm just trying to make sense of it all. But I started thinking of the spirit realm as an economy, as like they say, as above, so below. And what that means is if you imagine the spirit realm running almost just like our physical realm, but on the other side. So you have people with different jobs or you have entities or spirits or deities with different jobs and different there's like a whole order to things and the tears and and spirits work for things. And uh, and I think that there's some sort of currency on the other side that's like, but it's like energy currency. I think they call that ashe. Uh, and it, I think that's a voodoo term or uh, possibly um, in hoodoo or voodoo. Um, I'm sure it, it extends to other theologies, but uh, it's basically like life force, life essence. Uh, and the things that we're learning is that you can offer the gods things in return for their help. Um, and I, th- I do believe that everybody has their own personal gods, both air quotes, good and air quotes, bad. Good and bad are sort of gray, like I said, because the let's say in voodoo they call them like hot and cold spirits so the colder spirits are there to or deities they're there to guide you to your true path and help you along and then the warmer ones are there to detract you or get in the way um and but their job is important too because they make you work for the lessons that you learn if you're just handed things how many how many like rich kids grow up and they don't appreciate anything and because they haven't had to struggle for it the struggle is what makes a lesson learnt like truly learnt like the my words if if i'm talking to somebody about this and none of this resonates with them it's because you haven't experienced anything that you can relate to my words and you can't feel the weight of my words because there are no weight behind them, because there's no context, there's no personal context of yours to apply to my words. And words without weight, they're just words. So until you experience something in your own life that makes what I'm saying make sense, then you, you, it's just gonna be words. It's just gonna be my voice vibrating your little eardrummies, and that's it, nothing more. But if my words are vibrating your little eardrummies and wiggling your tummy and giving you like some feels in other places, then you know that uh, I might be right about some of this. But that's the fun thing. I might be wrong about a lot of it too. That's why I'm doing this podcast and starting this movement because I want it to grow with you guys. So I want you, I encourage you, send me an email, something. Like if you got a question about this, I'll answer it on air. I'm actually going to develop this into, now that I'm putting out the, uh, the precursor of all this to sort of overview, uh, I'm going to start having guests on and we're going to talk about it live on twitch and then i'm going to take that recording and put it out as a podcast so if you can't catch it live then you can always catch it on the podcast not live (laughs) but live we'll be able to all have a really fun discussion and we'll be reading questions live and things like that but that's further down the road but that's what this is going to turn into and i'm pretty excited about that so don't worry, as Sputron episodes, we're still going to have my fun, ridiculous, weird episodes where I talk about weird shit and uh, little tidbits of info, but it's going to be, every once in a while, we're going to have irreverentism episodes too, because I really think this is, a, is, it can really become a profound movement that helps to elevate humanity, because and if you really look at it, you know, think about country lines. The, those lines only exist because mankind said they exist. That's a man-made concept, a man-made idea. And I truly believe, I'm going to reference the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Back then, 
they looked at magic and science as two, like one and the same. But then as it was studied and people like researched, scientists, what you would consider modern day scientists, they, they just grabbed the pra practical applications of the magic and ran with it. And then it became science. And then magic went the other way. And then everybody started thinking it's two separate things. And then, oh, magic is just hokey bullshit. But really, it's like science and magic are the same thing. There's that quote by someone that I'm butchering, but it's like highly advanced science is or technology is indistinguishable from magic. We've got to start realizing that magic and science are one and the same. Science gives you a lot of hows, but not a whole lot of whys. And it gives you a lot of whys, but not a whole lot of hows. See that? See what I did there? Duality. flip flop, and floozies. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but seriously, that's a big part of irreverentism that we're going to get into in future episodes, too, is that science and magic, they're not at war with each other. They are each other. They just need to see it. i got to bury that, that hatchet and realize they're the same thing. Sagic. No. Magiants. I like magiants. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's other any other way to combine those two, two words. We're going with sagiants. No, whatever. If you got a term, email me. <laughs> Another aspect of things that I'm thinking that I want to throw out and really get into in depth in another episode is that I think that Earth and mankind. I think aliens exist, but I think they're, they're not what we think of them are. The, yeah, staff's good, what I said, word good. Um, <laughs> aliens exist, but they're not how we envision them. I think that the key to space travel lies in like reincarnation and going to the other spiritual realm, and then you can travel worlds by being reincarnated. And I think that there's some sort of cosmic rule system that keeps everything in line so it's like if i you know i honestly believe that aliens are here on this planet but they they don't know they're aliens everybody forgets and that's the great equalizer is if you come to this planet with you know bad intentions when you reincarnate you forget and then you got to remember that you came with bad intentions same thing with the good but i think that there are earthbound spirits and humans but i think that you could even maybe even use the term angels, but people like reincarnate here and they offer the world gifts through channeling some kind of, whether it be music or, I mean, look at fucking David Bowie, dude, singing about the stars, singing about angels. Like that guy knew what the fuck was up. And when he died, like the whole world mourned his loss because his words resonated with everybody on some kind of level because everybody, they, re they re it resonated deep down because everybody, it touched on that hint of, of the other side that we've forgotten, but we know is true in our hearts because we know that there's more to this existence than what we can see. We, we all know it. Even if you deny it and you say, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in shit after this. This is what it is, the end. Somewhere, you, you can't absolutely 100% convince yourself of that. If you are, you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Wow. I'm telling you, I think like artists and inventors and people, they're like, I, I'm sure some earthbound uh, spirits come, like have lived many lifetimes and figured that out too. But I think that aliens, air quotes, I'm going to go huh, huh, every time I, for air quotes. So like huh, huh, aliens, that means air quotes because you can't see me doing air quotes and I don't want to say air quotes. So huh, huh, aliens... And remember that, I'm filing that away for the rest of these episodes. If you hear that in a later episode, then you have to go back to this one and listen to this for that to make sense. Otherwise, you're going to be like, why the fuck does that guy just keep going huh, huh, before certain words? But you guys that are, you know, OGs here from the beginning, you know what's up. You know huh, huh, what's up. I forgot the point I was even trying to make. Um, yes, I think that artists pull from past experience if you look at like the matrix or um uh, like other things that like percy jackson and stuff like that i think that 
authors and stuff, like we're pulling from nuggets of truth, nuggets of cosmic truth, and we're veiling them in our stories. Because if there's one thing that humans love, we sure fucking love our stories. Do we not? And like, where do those stories come from? Where do we get these ideas? I think that we pull them from our past life experiences, and then we just veil them into modern times. We put them in the context of modern day. And it's just, that's why history repeats itself, because we're all just reincarnating and we're making the same mistakes. And it's like, if you want to, if you're at a point in your life right now that you're not happy and you're always depressed, it's probably because you're not finding, you're not following a true path. Because once you start following a true path, things literally just magically start falling into place for you. Why? Because you've got those deities working for you. And again, I'll get into this later in later episodes, but if you even understand the sliver of how much like almost every single second of our lives is affected by spirits and energies and the other sign, it would blow your mind. Free will exists, but there are no coincidences and there are no accidents. Everything is a direct result of our actions. So if you look at, if you're in somewhere that you don't want to be in life, take the blame. Realize that wherever you're at in life, is a direct result of the decision or multiple decisions that you've made in your life. And if you want to get out of that, all you have to do is make the decision to get out of it. It's not always easy to see the right path, but the problem is, is everybody keeps blaming external factors for their life's problems. But in doing so, you give away the power of yourself. Like you need to take that blame, you need to take that responsibility because with that blame and with that responsibility, therein lies your personal power. If you say, oh man, my life is fucked because I fucked it up, then you can easily say, I'm going to unfuck my life because I fucked it up in the first place. I can unfuck it. (laughs) So you have to take responsibility. Don't give that power away. Take that blame. Take that guilt or I mean, take the blame, because if you take the blame, you can drop the guilt. We're all bottling up this like personal guilt that's like hidden in ways because of our own failures. But you drop that shit and you say, yeah, I fucked up and say, all right, that with that comes some clarity. And you can say, well, since I fucked it up, how am I going to fix it? And that's what we got to do. And that's another thing that we can discuss more in depth. But there's so many levels to irreverentism that I can't cover it all. But Here, that's my spiel. That's my little kicker to start this off. So if that sounds intriguing to you, you know, follow me, follow my podcast because, I, you know, that's pretty sweet. And, you know, everybody likes, I don't know where I'm going with that. You know, hey, hopefully leave me a review, send me an email, interact with this because this, I want this to be interactive. Share it with your friends. If anything I said, uh, share it with your friends. But see, if you're listening to this, Something guided you to listen to this podcast. So you need to hear something that I'm saying. And if the signs are all around us, we've just forgotten how to communicate with the other side. And in future episodes, in the next, maybe in the next episode, I'm going to tell you guys how to start looking at the signs because it's all about the context. And you can actually start to communicate with your own personal deities and improve your life. And even if you don't believe in the spiritual side of it, you could just as easily apply it practically to your life. And we'll get into that too. So it's like almost everything that I tell you that has a spiritual reason has a practical reason too. I just, I just care about the greater good of humanity and helping people better themselves. So irreverentism, man, let's make it a thing because uh, we actually can. (laughs) The internet has made much more dumb things a thing. So maybe it's time we start using this wonderful technology that we have to create something great rather than just dumb. Well, no, let's create the dumb too because, I, man, I love dumb shit, and we all do. But let's also, you know, find some balance here and responsibly use it because another tenet of irreverentism is balance is the most important overall important thing and important way to live your life. Yes, you're going to have those rager nights that you're going to get fucked up and party hardy. But you can't be doing that every day. You can't live life one note. Think about if you just hit one note on a piano over and over again. Would that be a song? Would you want to hear that song? 
No, you got to go high. You got to go low. You got to hit, wiggle them, them ivories, hit the black keys every once in a while, hit some minor chords, get some majors in there. Because, yeah, nothing should be one note. It should always have its ups and downs, its ebbs, its flows. What do you know? <laughs> yeah, this is my ramble and my overview of irreverentism. So, like I said, we'll talk more detail about all of this uh, in more episodes. But also, we're going to have those weird episodes too, those just super fun and stupid episodes. Well, I hope they're all super fun and stupid episodes, but, you know, if you've heard the first episode, you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. But I'm Sig Neutron. You can find me on the social medias, at Sig Neutron, on Instagram and Twitter. Also, I do live sculpting and all kinds of weird stuff. Also going to make this a live recording of a podcast show with guests uh, at twitch.tv slash Sig Neutron. And a lot of the videos that I go from there, I upload them to our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash bizarroagogo, B-I-Z-A-R-R-O-A-U-G-O-G-O. You remember how, you know how I remember the element of gold? It's A-U. And just think, someone just stole your gold watch and you shout, A-U! That was from, I think, Three's Company is where I learned that from, possibly. (laughs) Man, I love that show. So, hey, if, you, if this sounds interesting to you, definitely appreciate following the podcast, leaving reviews, uh, and also sharing it with your friends. Because, uh, yeah, words don't go, I don't know. I was going to try to say something profound, but I got, I got nothing. Sharing it's cool, and I'd appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. And viva la baloney, motherfuckers. We out. Ah, uh, nope, I lied. You know, this is Sputron, so I wouldn't let you guys go without hearing at least some kind of a dumb song. So uh, I'm going to play play you guys out, uh, or play myself out with, uh, I said play myself. I'm going to play, uh, play us out with a song about a bald man with a beard and his booty and some jeggings. Gonna put you in a trance. Gonna put you in a trance. I'm watching that ass. Gonna put you in a trance. Gonna put you in a trance. Gonna put you in a trance.